Thank you very much, Holly. Now, since the war started in Syria in 2012, 11 million innocent people have been displaced, their homes destroyed, moving from place to place, living in tents. Mike Seawright is the founder of Relief Aid, a charity operated from here in New Zealand, who has helped over 78,000 people affected so far. Please welcome Mike Seawright. Yes. Welcome. Mike, it is great to have you in the studio again, and you've just come back as we've heard. What is the situation for people like there? Well, for families living in Syria, Syria, the situation is absolutely catastrophic. They've been forced from home to home, as you mentioned, Mel. They've forced up to the border, living in camps under completely dire conditions, surrounded by mud and dust. In winter, it's minus five, ice and snow, and in summer, it's 50 degrees. And you can imagine what, what it's like living in a tent in that yeah. situation. So what, what about the day-to-day -day reality for these people? Because I'm just thinking of me with a family living in these situations. I mean, how do they cope? Well, they're trying to function in a home exactly as we do in New Zealand, except they're in a tent. Mm. They don't have any electricity. They don't have any running water. Their kids have no schools, although there's a few of those have been popping up, which is one of the inspiring things of Syria. Syrians were always keen on education, and they've managed to keep this going right through the war, even if it's in a little tent school wow. run by an old guy who, frankly, just wanted to keep his own kids educated to start with, and it's built mm. into a larger thing. It's incredible. I mean, what are the camps like? I mean, Oh, they're dire. I mean, most of the people that are moving now, and there's been 277,000, it's around about the size of Hamilton, have moved since January. So this is a huge number of people moving. They're coming up into these camps and they've got nowhere to live. So this, they're forced to stay in tents made of blankets sewn together, tarpaulins draped over them because they're leaking. Water's flooding yeah. through their camps and they're, again, completely surrounded by mud. So these are, No one would live in these conditions. These camp usually. cities, really, aren't they? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, some of them have thousands. Some of them just have, you know, 20 or 30 families perched on the side of a field. They've got nowhere else to go. They even have to pay rent to some of these yeah. landlords. How much have the camps changed over the seven years? Well, they've got worse, especially right. the, the camps that we're supporting. Okay. There's formal camps and informal camps. Some of the formal camps have a bit of structure to them, a bit of infrastructure. The informal camps that we support have absolutely nothing. So if they can, they get a truck in, fill up a central container for water, and then they've got a jerry can water container set it back to their tent. None of them have power, so this is why we're giving them solar lamps. Because you can imagine, what's it like cooking for, cooking for your um, kids at night? You mm. can't see can't anything, see anything. Yeah. what you're doing. Well, it's difficult so, enough cooking for them anyway. I mean, you know, w with, with light or whatever. Uh, I mean, we know that you're the founder of Relief Aid. Um, you've been working in Syria since 2015, isn't it? Now, right. for people who are at home, uh, what's it like for the people caught up in the crisis there? I mean, what exactly are you doing, so, sorry, for the people that are caught up in the crisis? Well, we recognise that, um, along with our partner, Shelterbox UK, that people have absolutely basic shelter needs they need addressing. So we're giving them blankets and mattresses uh, solar lamps, as I mentioned before, cooking sets, because they're literally forced out of their home, bombed, repeatedly moving, and here they end up sort of in a safe environment, even though there's still attacks against these camps, um, but having none of the infrastructure. So what we want to do, and what we are doing, is making sure that they can simply survive the day. Mm. And, I mean, it's not... It's not changing the world in the sense that the war has to stop, but at least it's keeping them alive mm. until it does. What about gaining access to the camps? Is that difficult to give them the things they need? Gaining access to the camps is not so difficult in terms of you know, physical permissions, but what's really challenging is working within a very volatile security environment. So to move our materials into Syria, so we mostly bring them in from Turkey, we've got eight, nine, ten trucks, so an entire convoy moving across the border. There's airstrikes happening on the roads, Recently, as we moved our last distribution in, the one I've just come back from, there's infighting between the opposition groups. So we have to find, you know, two or three hour windows to move our trucks so that no one gets, uh, to move them in safely so that no one gets hurt and that our materials make it to the families themselves. Yeah. You know, we sit here in New Zealand and we watch the footage and, you know, it's heartbreaking and we all want to help. What's a constructive way to help? I think one of the things that New Zealanders are amazing at, and that is helping their neighbours, and we've also seen that they've been keen to help people overseas. So we get a variety of community support, a Wale de Lipo, which is a small group in Fokatani that did a just recently four and a half kilometre swim, and a small girl, uh, Pearl, she's eight years old, 
she's raised enough money for us to support 240 people in Syria. I mean, she was selling hand warmers in winter wow. and ice blocks in summer. There she is on I screen. Mean, Gorgeous. I mean, if an eight-year-old can do this, yes. you know, then I'm, I'm sure we can all maybe, you know, do our bit, mm. both maybe within New Zealand, like with St John's, or abroad with our work in Syria. Awesome. Hey, well, thank you. You're always enlightening when you come in. It's, yeah. it's good to hear from someone who's been on the ground. Uh, to check out more on what Mike and his team do and how you can help, go to reliefa.org.nz.